Meanwhile, demonstrations in solidarity with Iran are taking place all around the world today, and rallies are forming as human chains, and that includes in several cities right here in Canada. CBC's Meg Roberts has more from a demonstration in Toronto. Well, I'm standing here at Young and St. Clair, and as you can see, the streets are lined full of people who are supporting the people of Iran. Where We've driven down Young Street from Dundas. The street is lined. There's hardly any sections of the road that there are any breaks from this human chain. Uh, we know that thousands of people are up at Young and Finch, and we've spoken to organizers who say they're expecting about 60,000 people out here over the course of the day. Uh, you know, people are out here saying that they're showing support for their friends and family in Iran. Uh, and and they're also uh, trying to put pressure on the Canadian government to take action against Iran's leaders. This all comes after the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini, who was killed by the uh, morality police uh, in September. Um, you know, you can feel in the atmosphere here how, how loud it is. You can feel the frustration and the emotion from people. They're chanting Masa Amini's name. They're also uh, chanting freedom for Iran. You can see behind me also that there's pictures. People are holding up pictures. And those are um, people who have died in Iran during protests. So uh, lots of emotion, lots of noise out here uh, this afternoon. Now, I am joined by a, a protester here. Uh, this is Tina. Tina, what does it feel like to be out here today as uh, somebody who was born in Iran? Oh, it's, it's incredible. I think the, the, the passion and the anger of people is, is so palpable. And I have to tell you, as, as a very proud Canadian Iranian, the past six weeks have been tremendously difficult for us. And it's, uh, you know, we feel so lucky that we live outside of Iran and have an opportunity to voice our anger and frustration. And, and we have the freedom of speech here in Canada. There are thousands and thousands of people that are out here today. What does this show of support mean to you and to people back uh, in Iran? You know, it, it, for the people back in Iran, and I have, I have family, I have a lot of great friends, uh, this is vital. This is uh, really an injection of, of life and um, sort of uh, uh, sustaining their fight. Uh, it sends them energy and, and they know that they're being heard. Uh, for us, the, the, the camaraderie and the solidarity is uh, so important. I've lived in Canada for 39 years. Um, I was nine years old when the re revolution, 1979 revolution took place. I left at 13 and I have to tell you, even at 13 years of age, I was very well aware that as a woman, my rights would have been taken away from me. So what you're seeing here for me personally is uh, 39 years of pent up anger and frustration. And it's really good to finally be able to let it out and hope for freedom for Iran. Absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Similar protests are happening across the world today and across the country. Natasha. That's CBC's Meg Report, Megan Roberts reporting in Toronto. Okay, and let's get an even closer look at that human chain in Toronto. I'll, excuse me. Amir Ali Alavi is one of the organizers and a member of the Association of Families of Flight PS752 victims, and she shows us the mood on the street. We gathered here uh, alongside Young Street, all the way from north of the, of the street, uh, on steels, all the way to the shore, uh, in solidarity uh, with the people in Iran who are fighting for their freedom. Uh, the, 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 few, the event today is actually part of a bigger event. It's a global event, more than 80 cities, close to 100, I've heard, the latest, uh, around the world, in, in North America, Europe, and Australia. And uh, we are forming human chains all around the world to stand for, uh, with the people of Iran to, to be their voice when their internet is cut off and restricted uh, and, and ask our government to, to stand with the people of Iran. I mean, Ali, it, the noise is part of the story, so I hope you can hear me. Um, you mentioned there might be 80 to 100 different cities uh, participating. We've read reports of up to 140 cities that could be participating around the world, so it gives you a sense of how vast this chant, this movement has become. Talk to me about how many people you anticipate are going to come out in Toronto, and just the, the length of Young Street, how many kilometers of a human chain is that going to be? Yeah, uh, well, uh, actually we had, uh, we have received requests from uh, more than 500 cities to, to be part of this movement. We were able, only able to process about 100 of them. But in Toronto, uh, it, it is a very long stretch 
of the of the street. We can appreciate everybody on the streets and you know, lining up uh, here. That's the uh, we think that we need about fifteen to twenty thousand people. Wow. This is not hard to imagine. That uh, you know, a, a turnout that is not hard to imagine because. Just a few weeks ago in Toronto, in Richmond Hill, uh, we had more than 50,000 people turn out That's right. in support of the same movement. And uh, last week in Berlin, um, people gathered uh, from around Europe. We heard it's more uh, the, the crowd size was more than 100,000 people. So that so the movement is huge. The mo movement is huge in Iran and all around the world. I mean, Ali, those, the people who are chanting beside you, what are they chanting? What are they shouting? Well, the, the, the main word, uh, the, the main chant is woman, life, freedom, or in Farsi, it's Zan Zan Degi Azadi. But it, it really embodies more, you know, most of the uh, human rights that people in Iran are, are asking for. They're asking for uh, the, the equality of, of uh, people, you know, regardless of their gender, uh, their, uh, you know, ethnicity, their sexual uh, orientation, and uh, so, you know, freedom in every respect. And, you know, this is really not possible with the regime who is in charge, who's, uh, uh, you know, really keeping the Iranian people hostage at this moment. Uh, and people are demanding regime change using this very progressive feminist uh, chance. You know, but Amir Ali, you and I are here in Toronto. People in the West can have these protests, but the real story is happening on the ground in cities and communities and villages across Iran, where people are losing their lives for this protest. What are you hearing from friends and family in Iran about how serious this movement has become? Well, that's right. Uh, we, you know, my, my heart really goes out to the people of Iran who are fighting on the streets. Uh, they, they are being killed. They are be being met with violent crackdowns. You see the security forces going to schools, to high schools, uh, you know, throwing tear gases, beating uh, the students. A few of the students inside their schools have actually died of the severe beating. They have thrown tear gases inside the ERs. Uh, you see, uh, you know, indiscriminate firing at the masses of the people who come onto the streets. It is really uh, incredible scenes that you see on the street. But, you know, the other day I saw one scene that was, was particularly moving. Uh, when the, uh, the security forces were lining up on the other side of the streets, people were standing on this side. People started to kneel and ask the security forces to shoot them if it really means that to yeah. them. And of course, the security forces did not because, you know, it, it was really, really great to see people do that. Amir Ali, as part of the scene around you, are you at all able to walk around and show us what you're looking at and what the scene is like? Sure, well, I can uh, start walking that way. You can see uh, people, you know, uh, this section is actually a lot of families and victims of flight teams in the pipe tree that was lost a few years ago. We're standing in uh, the, the stretch of the street. I cannot walk the whole way. It's uh, more than 20 kilometers, but uh, it, it's really incredible to see so many people even chanting, you know, when they are standing uh, in a linear way. Uh, it's, uh, you see, we keep on calling, say her name. It's Masa Amini. She is, she has uh, been a symbol of freedom movement in Iran. That was Amir Ali Alavi, one of the protesters at the Human Change Chain demonstration in Toronto. And it's not just in Toronto, of course. The human chains in solidarity with the Iranian people are popping up across Canada and around the world. Neil Herland is following that part of the story for us. Neil.
Natasha, protests against the Iranian government are planned right across Canada today from Vancouver to St. John's. In Vancouver, the human chain is supposed to extend from the Lionsgate Bridge and Stanley Park to downtown. And if you know Vancouver, that's a pretty long stretch. In Calgary, demonstrators are gathering along the Bow River today. In Winnipeg, activists are standing together in front of the Canadian Human Rights Museum. In Ottawa, a human chain will form next hour along the Alexandra Bridge, linking Ontario and Quebec. And we're just getting word that some politicians will be attending that rally. In Montreal, protesters are supposed to stand at the gates of McGill University. And in Halifax, they stood on the waterfront. Now, this is a worldwide movement, and we have some video from some of the demonstrations today. Let's bring it up. Let's start here now with New Zealand, a human chain, as you can see, forming along the water. People dancing, wearing rain jackets, not worried about the rain. They clearly want to get their message out. Next, we have a, a human chain form outside the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. This is one of the most popular attractions in Glasgow. These protests are being organized by the Association of Families of Flight PS752 victims. And you may recall that in January 2020, a Ukraine International Airlines flight, it was shot down just minutes after taking off from Tehran by an Iranian surface-to-air missile. 55 Canadian citizens and 30 permanent residents were among the 176 people killed in this tragedy and activists here in Canada and around, around the world are now calling for regime change in Iran. Natasha. Okay, thank you, Neil.